What's it like playing an old man in a young man's body? Fun. Great fun, because I get to be the cleverest, maddest, oldest person in the universe. And, you know, like, look like I do, so it's cool. Man. Do your mannerisms change? I think your mannerisms always slightly change when you're playing any part, because, you know, somehow your body's not your own. But in the same breath, you draw on a load of your own mannerisms. So, I mean, I don't know. I, 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 not consciously. How much has your character, has the Doctor Who character for you changed since you auditioned for the part? Oh wow, I mean hugely, and I think even from, that's a good question, even from episode 1 to episode 13, I mean, by 13 I'm a different Doctor, you know, uh, and I get better and better at that. You don't think you're very good in the beginning, or what? <laughs> uh, you know, I think we've got a strong first step, but I, I think we get better and better and better and better, and by 12 and 13 we're on fire, man, you know? Because in the first episode, you really showed a balance of the comedian and the defender protector, and you only got a taste of that in the end. Is it difficult to balance those two sides of the doctor's personality? No, I think that's one of the great interesting things about the doctor. You know, when the world's collapsing, you can make a joke about someone's hair. You know, he, he's sort of that mad, and uh, it's one of the great virtues of playing him. But I think that's what keeps him sane. You know, he's he's dealt with so much tragedy that if he didn't make jokes and laugh and try and make other people laugh, he'd go a bit mad. You know. So can you give us like a little insight as to how he's changed in 13 episodes? Well, I mean, it's like anything artistic. The more you do something, the better you get, the more confident you get. And I suppose those things apply to me as an actor. So I don't know. I, you know, I, I, I can't really because I don't analyze it in those terms. But um, I just hope that he's become more assured, I suppose. What's easier to play, the comedian or the defender? Neither of them are easy or hard. It's um, you know, it's it's you're playing a character. You're playing one man. You're never playing yeah. them in those sorts of ways. You know, I I don't think of it like that. And final question: What is the one alien you've been most excited to act with in the Hooverse? Wow, that's a really good question. Um, the Weeping Angels are probably one of my favourites. I think, uh, but. I think episode six, Vampires in Venice, because it was just six really hot vampires. <laughs> and every day was a joy, because we had these six really hot vampires staying up at work. You know? I mean, it's, it's really exciting. I mean, something I always change was that they don't, do, do I have control of the show or does it have control over me? You know, it's, a, it's, it's, such a, it's such a monster to keep going. It's a hugely different job. I loved coming in and doing the occasional episode for Russell. That was a brilliant gig, because you come in, wave to the crowds, do that show, goes down well, wave to the crowds, off you go, brilliant, loved all that. But how could I turn down doing this? You know, it's just so challenging and huge. And there is absolutely nothing that you don't learn about television doing this job. It seems like hardly anyone ever dies on your episodes. What is your reasoning for that? There wasn't a reason. Uh, it just, it, I mean, it's, it's a big old coincidence uh, that it happens as many times. And I'm trying to work out when the first, when, my, when blood is first in my hands. It's in, it's in the first episode, though it happens off screen. Someone gets offed, and people do get off this year. It's, it's not a strategy. You couldn't keep that going. It'd be insane. I, mean, I, I was a bit astonished when I realised I'd done it. And I think there's another episode I've done this year in which nobody dies. <laughs> so, but it's not. Um, maybe I'm just not that dark. Well, it's dark. It's dark. What was it like changing the tone? The last final specials and episodes were a bit dour. What was it like changing it to a more... A uh, family-friendly show. Well, to be honest, that's easy. It's sort of sprung back to its natural form. I mean, I think I, I, I love those specials, but I did think we'd gone along. We, we might have chased some of the kids out of the room. One and, more uh, here, so it's good to get that, you know, that, 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 the, the fun and the adventure. The doctor's never depressed for long. You know, his idea of dying is getting ten years younger and growing a bigger chin. That's you know, it's not, you. it's not. It's just not that dark. Do you think that Amy's in love with the Doctor, and why? Ooh, I think that Amy has a love for the Doctor. I think that there's a really deep connection between these two people. But as for a romantic, no. What kind of relationship would you describe it as? I would describe it as a very turbulent roller coaster um, of a relationship. It's up and down, and, and they kind of, you know, they drive each other up the wall, yet they care so much about each other. And they probably drive each other up the wall because they care so much about each other. And um, it's that level of uh, passion towards each other. The role of companion is very, very difficult uh, for the characters. Uh, do you think Amy is ready for this? Uh, uh, well, you, you mean to go on all these adventures? Amy has been ready for many years, as we'll find out in the first episode. Was, uh, finally, what is the one alien you 
have been most excited to work with in the Whoverse? Weeping Angels, without a doubt, because Blink is my favourite Doctor Who episode. And they're back! They're back! And they're even more scary than ever. Oh, they're, they're more scary than Blink? More, uh, oh, more, more scary. I didn't think that was possible, but it's the next level.